Hi there, this is Grooving in G and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm jumping slightly ahead and I'm actually going to do a tutorial on using the Digitact inside Renoise. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I've actually been using this workflow a lot recently and I think it'll be very valuable to show it whilst I'm in the middle of it before I get on to doing other things. So that's the reason I'm jumping a bit ahead. First of all, we've just got to do a couple of settings on the Digitact. Okay, so I've just created a new project. And now I'm going to first of all come into the MIDI config and I want to have it on clock send and transport send. Let's also put on program change receive and we'll get more into that later. So those are the settings there and then we want to go actually into our system and make sure you've got it on USB audio MIDI. We're not using Overbridge for this. And then that should be all good. So now let's jump into Renoise and let's go preferences. And what you've got to do is you've got to set your Digitact as MIDI clock slave as the in device. Okay, and then you've also you got to come and you've got to have this little clock here next to BPM and it'll say when when enabled, slave the transport to the MIDI clock master. And we've just set the MIDI clock master as the Digitact. So now when I press play and pause on my Digitact, it's going to run the sequencer inside of Renoise, which is cool. So that's the first bit. Okay, secondly, we've got to come up into the instruments window in Renoise and we're going to go and we're going to just name Digitact track one and we're going to create a track. We're going to come onto MIDI. We're going to select the in device as the Electron Digitact and we're going to put this one on channel one. Okay, and then we're also going to assign it to track one. Uh, and so let's go track one is called this Digitact one and let's quickly just put all these in. Now I'm also, I'm going to just put in nine and ten just so I can show you later on that it's quite useful to have, may potentially have all 16 tracks in your template. Okay, so moving on, we're now going to copy this number one, and we're going to paste it here. We're going to change this to two, and then we're going to come in the MIDI settings, and we're going to change this to channel two. And we're also going to assign it to the second channel. So what I'm doing is, uh, as I'm linking the MIDI channels with the instruments, as well as going to the specific track out. So that means that I'll be able to uh, apply effects on the individual instruments later on. So it's, it's better to do this right in the beginning as it saves you having to do the work later on. And then you can save it away in your template. So let's just quickly go. Okay, so I've now got to go through each of these and go to the MIDI section, select the in device as a Digitact and align them to the appropriate MIDI channel. Okay, so we've got all our MIDI tracks assigned to individual instruments, and then we've linked these now to our 10 tracks in the mixer. Let's get this open as well. Now we've got to come back to the Digitact, and we've got to start linking the channels. So let's go, and this is going to be channel one. Let's go to track number two, channel two, track number three, channel three. Okay, so you've got your eight MIDI tracks in the Digitact and now all linked to the first eight here in Renoise. And so before you do any more, I would advise saving this out. You can save as a template song or you can just save as and you can come and say, I would call this Renoise template three. So you see I've been 
doing a bit of work here, trying to get around some of these latency problems. Really nice template three. It's all saved away, and then when you open it, you can just save as and go on as you did. So now let's get into it, and I'm just going to show you why this is so useful. So I can drag a sample into this first track, and now I can trigger this on my Digitact, and I can actually put sample points in in Renoise and begin to chop up this sample maybe. I think possibly let's go and let's go track. So let's just maybe sequence something very simply. You can use the Digitax. So there's a bit of overlap there, so let's just put mono on. And so you can just start to take advantage of the, maybe the trig conditions, so I could go, maybe I copy this one and I go trig, and I go two of two. And so you can start to combine the sequencer and the trig conditions in Digitax sequencing renoise. I say one of the maybe the advantages or the disadvantages of the Digitact is that when you're slicing sample, especially longer ones, is that you're not able to zoom into the sample when you're trying to cut it up in the sample editor. So it can be quite limiting. It, sometimes it's a benefit because it makes you listen with your ears, but sometimes I quite want to be quite precise with my chops. And Renoise does let you do this. You can get right in and you see I've put that right at the zero crossing point there. And so you get very clean slices. You can also do all kinds of things. So I can actually use Renoise's effects as well. So because I've linked up this first track to this first channel, whatever I put on this first channel will actually start to affect the sample. Now, one thing I do want to show you is that, so let's just save, is that you can obviously come through and you can fill out all your eight MIDI channels and then you're kind of, you've run out of space. So for each pattern, you can really only have eight MIDI channels. But what I've been kind of doing is say I'm on pattern two and I want to actually have say in pattern one, I want to have a sidechain version of the chords, but in pattern two, I don't. Now, what you can do is you can actually assign it to a different MIDI channel. So I'll show you. Essentially, what you're doing is just copying track number one, placing it on track number nine and changing the, making sure the channel MIDI channel is still on number nine. So now I've got the same sample, but now it's on number nine. And maybe I could even say, come to this first chop and I could trim the sample. So now I can play, the transpose this one chord up and down the keyboard. And then in pattern number two even, I could clear this, set the MIDI channel now for one to come up to nine. And now I've kind of gained a track. So let's go. Maybe we'll do some. And now we've got a completely different pattern triggering a different MIDI channel. So you can utilize all 16 of your, your MIDI channels to give you variations of the existing samples you have in. And this is just one way you could do it. Or you could actually just use 16 channels and 
swapping between them on the different MIDI tracks. So you've actually, you get quite a lot of flexibility. I was, initially I was just using the eight tracks and I was kind of filling them out and then running out of space just using the MIDI. So this gives you a way to utilize all the, all 16 MIDI channels for your different patterns. Which is very cool. Yeah, so I hope this is useful f for some of you. I know I've jumped a bit ahead with doing this kind of stuff, but I want to just get this out there whilst I've been using it and uh, demonstrate some of the techniques that I've been going over. Anyway, well, thanks for listening and look for more content coming soon on my channel.